When you hear the word backwoods, does it make you think aviation, pilots, or flying? It's going to be cool to see the difference in pilots for sure. Well, I didn't. Not until Arkansas. Once a year, this backwoods event draws pilots to Ozark, Arkansas for one thing, skills. Because I guarantee you that uh, with that landing right there, it's uh, who may be to send uh, our medical out and here's a pilot that showed up to hone his skills in an aircraft that I've never seen before. Howdy y'all, I'm Levi No Guess. I'm here at Ark and Stoll 2022. I got my Slepchev Storch, which is a kind of a one-off deal. A replica of a 19, or a, actually a World War II Fiesler Storch from uh, the German Army, Luftwaffe. I'm uh, competing in the Arkansas this year. It's a slow, slow airplane, but it's a lot of fun and it's cool to look at. My flying career, I guess, essentially started when I was just a little kid. My dad was a pilot. We lived on a ranch and he had an airplane. And so growing up, I always had an airplane around. I didn't actually start professionally flying or really get into serious flying until I joined the Army. And I got a helicopter license before I actually got an airplane license. Even though I flew Super Cubs and Champs and all that stuff when my dad was, uh, when I was a kid, uh, daddy died when I was like 14. So I didn't really, I kind of got the rug pulled out from my feet, but I was always ate up with aviation, as they say in the Army. And uh, I call myself an avaholic. I like to fly anything with wings or rotor wings or anything. So uh, I started flying in the Army, flew Hueys. Flew, uh, then I wound up flying King Airs and Citations in the Army. And uh, then uh, as soon as I could, I bought a Clipper, which was my dad's airplane. My first airplane that I owned was 1949 Piper Clipper, which was my dad's before he died. And it got sold. I found it up in Michigan when the internet started kicking off, and then uh, next thing you know, I bought it. And now my son's flying that one. So, and then in between that and now, I've been flying Kit Foxes, Super Cubs, you know, 172s, 82s, Super, uh, whatever I can get my hands on. And where really are you like, based right now? I'm based in Colleen. Oh, sorry, Colleen, Texas. All right, Levi. So this is a very unique design. I haven't seen. Actually, this is the only one that I've ever right, seen. Yeah. In, in, uh, in real life, if you will, not just on social media. Um, so how did you come across it and, and make the decision to purchase it? Interestingly enough, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, is based at the same airport as I am, fell in love with the Storch in general. And he wanted to get one, but he realized that he couldn't afford a real one because of the maintenance and that kind of stuff. It's just, there are a few of them still left flying, but he decided, he found a kit made by a guy named Nestor Slepchev, who was building these kits in Australia. He's a Serbian guy that was in Australia building these kits. Bob found the airplane kit and then bought it. Had it shipped over to Colleen, Texas, and the guy that designed it, Nestor Slepchev himself, came with the kit. He brought two of them. He brought this one in the kit form, and he brought another one that was already built in a, in a light sport form, and that one went to Kirby Chambliss, who's an air show pilot. Nestor Slepchev put the wings on that one at the airport and then gave me a ride in Kirby's plane, and I thought that was pretty cool. Bob took this, his kit home and built it in about 11 months, had it flying. And then he flew off his 40 hours, and I was his first passenger after he was able to fly 40 hours off. And I just thought it was cool, and. I got into the stole flying and I kept telling Bob he needed to come to some of these competitions and fly this thing because it's just cool and it lands real short and takes off short. And he just wasn't interested, you know, and uh, he's one of the guys that he, he loves his plane. He gets out there every day, works on it, tinkers with it, you know, phenomenal builder, phenomenal guy. And he decided he was going to sell it and I had never flown it by myself. 
I was overseas working at the time and I said, can you hold it till I get back? I want to fly it. He said, well, I really need to sell it. And I bought me a bird dog and no. So I said, well, I better buy it. So I bought it and I've loved it ever since. And uh, I brought, bring it to these stole competitions. It's a big hit. Everybody loves looking at it. It really is a, a unique airplane. It really looks the part of the original Fiesler Storch and flies very, very similar from what I've been told. Are these still available today as a kit or at least in plans? Unfortunately, they're not available as a kit. You can find the plans. Um, there's a, I forget the company, but there's a company that sells the plans if you want to do a plans built version. So what are some of the specs on this? Uh, obviously it's built for flying very slow, but how slow can it fly? And how is it to fly up, up in the, uh, up at altitude? Well, the specs on it, the stall speed is posted at 29 miles per hour. Now, you can fly slower than that if you add some power, of course. It's got leading edge slats that are built in or affixed slats. So it really has a, the slow fly characteristics of, of this thing is phenomenal. And the, the way that it, it's designed in the German engineering of the time, you know, this is a 40s design and early 30s, 30s to late, or late 30s to early 40s design. You know, this was a World War II German engineered design. And it's basically, a, they came up with this airplane to do the similar thing that we were using, a Piper J3 Cub. The Army called it an L4, and the Germans decided they wanted something that'll do that. And what they did was they just, they went to the drawing board and they come up with this. The original version had 240 horsepower. This one's got 100 horsepower Rotax. But interestingly enough, the, the takeoff numbers and cruise and all that stuff is very similar to the original. I cruise about 75 to 80 miles an hour. And uh, I can get, the fastest I've ever had it was about 125 in a dive. And it's not anything, there's nothing fast about it. Now it's about how it flies, it flies like it's a big plane. The original version had 46 foot wingspan. This one's got about 32 but it feels bigger than it is. Roll rate is kind of slow, I would assume. Oh, roll rate is lethargic. <laughs> yeah, it is very slow on the roll, but uh, it's really, the best thing about it is the visibility out of it when you're flying it is really, you know, down and out is, which is designed to look at the ground and for liaison in the war. And so these windows make it really good to look at. The other thing that's really interesting about it is the landing gear. Obviously it's different than most aircraft, but it's got about, 15 to 18 inches of travel in the strut. This one, the original airplane had oleo struts, you know, with uh, hydraulic struts on there. These actually are bungees. There's bungees inside of this fairing here. And, uh, but you can see, if you want to look at that, you can see that there's a whole lot of travel in those just now. And when I take off, the wheels come down about another 12 inches. Really? Yeah, so when you watch it take off, it actually hurts me on the takeoff distance because the plane is flying and the wheels are still just going down. But it's, you know, that's what it's designed for. Because then when you come in to land, it just kind of sucks it up and just cushions it. As long as you don't hit on the mains first and you do a good nice three point, you're going to just land and you won't bounce. Okay. Now you can bounce it if you try to do a wheel landing and, you know, you get in, a, get in that porpoise action. But it's a very, very docile airplane to fly. So next to this stole gear, you've got uh, a missile or a torpedo well that's my bomb it's a 500 pound bomb and i drop it you know no it's actually an auxiliary tank um it's not this was not on the original airplane but these are the wings the way they're designed the, the tank is in the leading edge uh similar to a bonanza and uh they're only eight and a half gallons in each wing so for long cross-country trips this is a 10 gallon fuel tank auxiliary tank i burn off of the right wing tank and then i have a transfer pump pumps the fuel back up into the right wing. So okay. Levi, I'm, um, I like to, these days, especially at stall competitions and, and uh, such, to ask people about their suspensions. Obviously this is of the design, but what are you, what are you running on as a tail wheel? On this one, I've got a mall tail wheel. It's different than the original, what would be scale version of a tail wheel. It's a little bit different than the original, but it works pretty good. The uh, original tail wheel was a straight basically a straight pipe going down with a with a, a wheel that swiveled it wasn't really steerable okay and it, it was a monstrosity of a looking thing but it was kind of cool but this one here is more conventional and mall tail wheels as you know are pretty popular 
I'm at the airport a lot more these days editing and walking out of the FBO out onto the ramp. It's bright. So I've been wearing my flying eyes eyewear a lot more these days. They're lightweight, extremely comfortable, flexible, and have micro thin temples that slip under your headsets. You like saving money? Get 10% off right now by using the code experimental. Check out the links below. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Diamond Doors at DiamondDoors.com. Flying Eyes at FlyingEyesOptics.com Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. All right, so stepping into the interior, this is very of the age uh, interior for sure. So you would think this is more of a museum piece than a kit. Yeah, for the most part, the guy that built it was, uh, he's a retired army officer, officer or army officer pilot. And he tried to make it look pretty normal, pretty, I guess you would say, period, or uh, authentically military at least. Um, the only difference is he put a GRT screen in there, which really is nice. Um, but the rest of it, you know, the standard old steam gauges, the round dials and stuff like that. And some of this stuff like, uh, this is my, my telephone holder, but this light right here is a, actually Army surplus stuff. And some of the switches over here that you uh, are actually out of, uh, surplus military type helicopters and stuff. Um, he uh, he really he really liked the look of the military, so he he left it that way. See there, you can see my V speeds and stuff posted. So gotcha. Yeah, I get that. The one. Uh, so you 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 run in. Um you running standard toe brakes on this or heel or? Well, interestingly enough, they're toe brakes. Okay. Um, I will tell you they're not very good brakes. <laughs> the brakes are, the, the brakes that came with the kit are not very good. They're uh, made from Italian or they're Italian made. And the brakes themselves are good. But the, on this airplane, I did oversize the tires a little bit. We've got 850s on here. And they're just not a lot of brake. Most people flying this though wouldn't care about that because you don't really need brakes on this plane. But for the competition, I would, I'd really like to have better brakes or another puck or something. But the toe brakes, if you look down in here, you can see that the structure of the airplane is such, if you look at that right brake, it's very close to the frame. And I have been known, I don't fly with my cowboy boots anymore in this one when I'm doing a competition because my toes can sometimes get caught on that frame and I'm thinking I'm pushing on the brake, but I'm pushing on the airframe. So I fly with house shoes or socks when I'm doing a competition. Well, Levi, this looks rather roomy inside. What is the uh, useful load of this aircraft? It's about a little over 400 pounds. I've got uh, 1300 or 1320 max gross, light sport. And then it's about a 785 airplane, uh, empty. So it's a, it's pretty good. And I've actually, you know, with two people in here and gas, it's just, a, if you know, if you're not uh, heavy people, you know, with two people, I usually don't fill up the uh, most of the I don't put ox fuel tank ever unless I'm going on a trip sure but uh, for the most part you know you can put two two uh, normal sized people in here and it flies great so Levi this is not the first time we've met you know no. <laughs> we, we bump into each other a lot of air shows you're, you're very active in our aviation community so I just figured I'd ask you on camera what is it about especially the stoll comps specifically that you like the most or like maybe one or two things um, both on the the aircraft side and then maybe the community side well I'm a self-proclaimed avaholic so I love airplanes in general but if you really want to break it down to what is the best thing about these events it's the people it's the friends that you make like yourself and just everybody you meet at these events 
uh, are by and large really, really good people. We help each other out. You know, we get together around the campfires, do some picking and singing. We do some just amazing things, you know. And, and the fact of the matter is that all of the people that are here are from all walks of life. And it's just neat to meet and find out what people do and to see the passion that even though they may be a, a professional crane operator or they may be, you know, car sales people, they may be real estate people, but we all have aviation in common. And we come together and it's just an amazing thing. And the friendships that we make, we, you know, we, we meet each other at these events and we go home. We may or may not talk to each other for, you know, until the next event. But when we get back together, it's like we never, never were apart. There's so many events, they're so close together. You go like quarterly to this. Yeah, anyway. well, there's been a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's unfortunately, I wish I could go to every one of them, but I can't. You know, most of us still have to work and still have to earn a little, earn a little bit so we can spend it on the playtime, you know. But uh, but yeah, the people are the, are the best. And then places like this, Arkansas, um, Arkansas backcountry out here, this is amazing. You know, there's just, this is the only event like this one. Um, a lot of the stole events, you know, we just were landing on the line, but here we get to actually practice some, or, you know, put a lot of other skills to use that we do on a regular basis, you know, because, and the sport is growing, the people are growing into it, and one of the things that I'm doing, I just bought a Super Cub so I can do some training, tailwheel training, I'm a CFI, and I like to do tailwheel training and get some people to learn how to do this safely. You know, that's it. The big thing is every once in a while we do have some incidents and my uh, one of my goals and one of the, all of our goals here is to try to help people along and make sure that they, they have the skills that they need to do this kind of stuff. It's a very, very fun, fun event. All of these events are fun, but the only way to really have fun doing it is to be safe and to learn the limits of the airplane and we all get together and talk about how to do it better and how to do it this way and you know we get pointers from everybody and, and just watching other people fly it's amazing you know I feel humbled by the skill of the people that are out at these events and uh, you know I'm a CFI but being a CFI doesn't make you a great pilot you know CFI just means I have the ability to legally train people but there's a lot of people out here that are not CFIs that I learn a lot from and uh, that's what really is you know the people so the people, we share skills, we share fun, we share fellowship. It's just an amazing community, an amazing opportunity.